Hey y'all, it's Brooke Miller. I am here to give you an update on what happened in the market in January 2024, and I'm going to compare it to last year and our last normal year, which was 2019. So stay tuned. So January 2024 is actually off to a great start. And I want to share with you some information and some data points comparing January 2024 to January 2023. And then our last normal year, which was January 2019. So I am going to share my screen. So you can follow along with me. And hopefully I'm still in the little corner somewhere, maybe we'll see. Uh, but first off, this chart shows us new listings that came on the market in January, new under contract. So these are homes that went under contract in the month of January and the number of homes that have sold in the month of January. So as you can see, the number of new listings in 2019 was much higher than it was in 2024. So when we talk about having an inventory challenge, that is what that's all about. So in 2019, we had 391 houses come on the market in the month of January, and we only had 262 come on the market in January of this year. So that's why we have an inventory problem. That is it right there. Now, of course, the homes number of homes going under contract is going to go down as well uh, because the number of homes available to go under contract is down. But you'll see that the ratios are very different there. So under contracts in January of 2019, we had 327 homes go under contract. Uh, this year, 300, excuse me, 222 went under contract this year. Um, and then how many sold in the month? How many closings occurred in the month of January? Now, January is typically a pretty slow closing month because those are contracts that were written in over the holidays. So between Thanksgiving and Christmas is typically when those contracts were written. So uh, that's a slow time of the year. So we'll have fewer homes selling in January. So 244 homes sold in 2019, 208 sold this year. So that's pretty good. And it's even more than sold last year, 199 sold last year. So you can see this chart shows you the challenge we're having with the inventory, the, uh, as a result, fewer homes are going under contract and fewer homes are selling. But if you kind of compare these ratios, look at the differential between the lines, and you can see that on average, a lot more homes that are coming on the market are actually selling now compared to 2019. And I can share that data with you right here, days on the market. So back in 2019, the average amount of time it took a home to uh, go under contract um, was 67 days, and that was good. Uh, normal is 90 days, so it was 67 days back then. And then in 2023, it went to 42, and it was even faster this year, 38. But you'll see the average and the median are very different. So the median, that's that number right in the middle, so half took longer to sell, half sold in a shorter amount of time. I think that's the better data point to look at. And in 2019, the median was 42 days, which is what the average was last year for under contract. Uh, and this year, the median was 18 days, 18 days on the market. To compare that to the sold properties. So these are the homes that have actually closed. So some of these homes that have gone under contract, that contract may not work out. So that home may come back on the market and add to the days on market a little bit, um, or it could just fail to sell and it doesn't come back on the market. So these are two different data points sharing the same uh, type of information, but it is a little bit different. So on average, the homes that sold in 2019 were selling in 62 days. Um, and this year, the average home is selling in 40 days. The ones that, uh, the median, it was 47 days in 2019, and it was only 21 days this year. So you can see time on market is very slow, but time on market, excuse me, time on market is very fast uh, compared to the last few years, and especially compared to last year. Uh, so that might not be something you're hearing in the media. Demand. So how I measure demand is I look at the number of homes coming on the market in a month, compared to the number of homes that are going under contract in a month. 
not necessarily the homes that have sold in the month because the homes that have sold in the month, those contracts were written one or two months ago. So that doesn't really show you what's happening in those 30 days. So this is a better measure of that. So back in 2019, we had nearly an 84% demand in the month of January. And that is very strong. So average demand is right around 75%. So in 2019, we had above average demand in the market. 2023, we had 80% demand in the month, which means 80% of the homes that came on the market in the month, on average, were going under contract. So that number went down, but it's still higher than average. And this year, look at that. Boom. 85%. 85% in the month of January, which is incredible. So I think that just tells us that spring market is starting sooner. Another thing that's been changing out there is closing cost credit. So a buyer has the opportunity and part of their offer to ask the seller to credit some money from the proceeds against the buyer's closing cost. So it is a credit from the seller to the buyer at closing on paper. Um, and back in 2019, 66% of the closings that occurred in the month of January had some sort of credit associated with it. Uh, that's actually a pretty large number. And I find that interesting, and we'll get into another point a little bit later, but a lot of you might be thinking, hey, that's probably because people were buying down their interest rate. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but I'm pretty sure that was not the case, and I'll get to that in a bit. Last year, 55% of all the contracts that were closed in the month of January had a closing cost credit to the buyer, and this year it's gone down to 41%. So that number is starting to go down a little bit, while the interest rates are going up, as we know. So on January 31st or thereabouts, the last business day of the month of January, in 2019, the interest rate was 4.46%. That was the average 30-year fixed rate. In 2023, the average 30-year fixed rate on the last day of the month, business day of the month, was 6.09. And this year, it was 6.69. Now, one of the things I think is impacting that demand going up to 85% here is the fact that this 6.69%, though it looks larger, yes, than the 4.46 and the 6.09, but that 6.69 in a buyer's mind is being compared to the 8% interest that was happening back in October. So back in October, we hit a peak of 8%. So when we got to that peak of 8%, they were comparing that to the 6% they had at the beginning of the year. So that seemed huge. People stopped uh, looking for homes and you know they put things on the back burner for a little bit. Affordability was really affected by that. But now we're looking at 6.69% compared to the 8%. We're a whole percent and a half less than we were just a few months ago. So from a relative perspective, that seems awesome. And I think that is why we are seeing this higher demand, especially compared to last year, because consumer confidence, the confidence that people have last year, they're comparing that 6.0 rate to the two or the three that we had earlier in the year, uh, the year prior. And it was just like a no-go for them. But this year, comparing it, it's lower in uh, relative terms. So that's why I think uh, folks are going um, back into the market, even though these rates are much higher than they have been in the past. Average over the last uh, 30 years has been 6% interest. So we're at a good position, I think. And then finally, home values. Now, several years are missing in between here, but you can see the steady climb. So in January of 2019, the median price of a sold home in the month of January in the area was just over $307,000. In 2023, just last year, that median price was $412, $12,000, excuse me. And this year is just under $450,000. So you could see the values have gone up as well. So I want to reiterate to you, no matter what you're hearing in the media, no matter what you're seeing on Facebook or YouTube or any of the places where you get information, we are having a really good year so far. 
I think 2024 is going to turn out to be a better year than 2023. And I'm going to be honest with you, 2023 was a really good year. Watch one of my previous videos on my report of the entire year of 2023 compared to other years, and you'll see that 2023 actually was a pretty average year as far as the number of homes that sold. But compared to the years just immediately beforehand, it was very different. And I think a lot of people have a very short-term memory when it comes to real estate. But 2023 was a really, really, really good year. 2024 is going to be even better. So if you or someone you know is thinking about making a move out of the Fredericksburg area or in to the Fredericksburg area at some point in 2024. I love that connection. Connect us. I will be in touch and we'll take great care of you. Have a great day.